Hello everyone, this is Trija and today we are going to discuss about polygonal approximation using minimum parameter polygons. The main objective of this topic is to generate a method using which we can represent a boundary with a polygon which can retain the essence of the shape of the original boundary. One of the most effective way in which we can represent a boundary with a polygon is by using minimum parameter polygons. Let us discuss a general way in which we can obtain a minimum parameter polygon. Consider figure 1. This is a boundary of an arbitrary shape. In figure 2, we have surrounded the boundary with a set of concatenated concat concat cells and colored those cells which enclose the boundary completely with gray color. In order to obtain a minimum parameter polygon, let us consider the original boundary as a rubber band and allow it to shrink along the inner and outer walls of the light gray boundary. As it is constrained to shrink along the inner and outer walls, the polygon which we will be getting by the process of shrinking will be of minimum parameter. So this is the general way in which we can obtain a minimum parameter polygon. Here as we are surrounding the boundary with a group of cells, we are essentially reducing the area enclosure inside the boundary. Let us represent the area enclosure inside the boundary with a dark grey color. As we traverse through the boundary of the dark grey region, we see that the vertices are connected with a four connected straight lines. Also, we travel along the counterclockwise direction. We can see that there are convex and concave vertices that is angles which are less than 180 degrees and angles which are greater than 180 degrees. The convex vertices are denoted with white dots and the concave vertices are denoted with black dots. And also we can see that every concave vertex is having a mirror vertex alongside the outer wall of the light grey boundary. So, if we join all the white vertices and the mirrored concave vertices, we will be obtaining a minimum parameter polygon, which is represented in figure 3. Let us see the MPP algorithm, but first we need to keep in mind few observations. The MPP bounded by simply connected cellular complexes not self-intersecting. That is, the boundary enclosing the original provided boundary should not intersect itself. Every convex vertex of the MPP is a W vertex, but not every W vertex of a boundary is a vertex of the MPP. Here we can see this is a convex vertex of MPP and this is a white vertex. Here this is a white vertex, but it is not a vertex of the MPP. Every mirror concave vertex of MPP is a B vertex, but not every B vertex of a boundary is a vertex of the MPP. We can see that here this is a black vertex and is a vertex of MPP. But here this is a black vertex, but it is not the vertex of the MPP. All B vertices are on or outside the MPP and all W vertices are on or inside the MPP. Here we can see that this is a white vertex and it is on the MPP. This is a white vertex but it is inside the MPP. In this illustration, we are not provided with the black vertex which is outside the MPP. The uppermost leftmost vertex in a sequence of vertices contained in a cellular complex is always a W vertex of the MPP. We need to see that the uppermost and leftmost that is this vertex should always be a white vertex that is it should always be a convex vertex. So in order to calculate the MPP algorithm we need to consider calculation of orientation of triplet points. Consider three points A, B, C with coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 respectively. 
Let us consider a matrix A which consists of coordinates of the points A, B, C along with 1s. The depth of A will be greater than 0 if A, B, C are in counterclockwise sequence and the determinant of A will be is equal to 0 if A, B, C are in collinear. Determinant of A will be less than 0 if A, B, C are in clockwise sequence. For computer notational purpose, we represent debt of A as sin of A, B, C. Let us see the algorithm. For the co computation of the algorithm, we will form a list whose rows are the coordinates of each vertex and we will be having an additional element which denotes whether the vertex is white or black. We will be having few other variables. V0 represents the uppermost left vertex, WC and BC will be representing two pointers which crawls across the white vertices and the black vertices respectively and VL will be the last MPV vertex, VK will be the current vertex being examined. We start our computation by initializing WC is equals to BC is equals to V0. We will be having three conditions. <coughs> Condition A. If VK lies to the positive side of the line through pair VL and WC, that is sine of VL, WC, VK is greater than 0, that is determinant of VL, WC, VK is greater than 0, then we will consider the next MPP vertex as WC and we will initialize VL is equals to WC. And we reinitialize the algorithm by setting WC is equals to BC is equals to VL and continue with the next left. If VK lies on the next negative side of the line through pair VL WC or is collinear with it, that is, debt of VL WC VK is less than or equals to zero, and at the same time lies to the positive side of the line through VL and BC or is collinear with it that is debt of VL WC VK is equals to 0 then VL becomes candidate MPP vertex and we said WC is equals to VK if VK is convex otherwise BC is equals to VK and then we continue with the next vertex in the test. If VK lies on negative side of the line through pair VLBC that is sine of VLBC VK is less than 0. The next vertex will be BC and we let VL is equals to BC and then we reinitialize the algorithm by setting WC is equals to BC is equals to VL and continue the next vertex after VL. The algorithm terminates when it reaches the first vertex again and thus has processed all the vertices in the polygon. The vertices formed by the algorithm are the vertices of the MPP. That is the VLs obtained by the algorithm are the vertices. So in this way we will be computing the minimum polygon, perimeter polygon, polygon. That's it. Thank you.